Assalamu alaikum student welcome to another lecture another important lecture and before I start this lecture I want to tell you that today we are going to start the 16th lecture which means we have done almost 15th lecture before this so it means we have almost today we will complete half the mark remember so we'll be meeting for 32 times mean for 32 lectures and today by the grace of Almighty Allah we have completed how many yeah 15th lecture so 16th we will start today right so welcome to this lecture welcome to uh, another day another morning fine I hope you are all well I hope you all are enjoying your TEFL course and also the other course that you are pursuing this semester right so as always I, 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 I in fact intend to tell you that you people are doing a good job you people are pursuing a very effective program and again I would say that you have to make value of this degree and again the question is how how can you make the value of degree so the way you are putting efforts now so I want you to to keep on doing it till you complete this course clear so whatever the, the, the topic your concerned teacher in fact discusses with you listen to the, to the lecture also refer to the sources and also what I, I want you to do is that consult other sources right I mean you have access to technology internet is there again a best source of information best source of the knowledge so what you need to do is that that of course in whenever you find time you see you need to uh, browse search in uh, different websites so that would definitely add value to you and then you need to visit uh, libraries they can be e-libraries of course they can be physical libraries so once you visit a library definitely you see different reference books of course you have you see different magazines right different journals so that is the need of the program because you people are pursuing a master's degree so masters in English linguistics literature and TEFL right because you have almost three six credit hours for the TEFL course so I mean research is also needed at this at this stage of the degree that you are in so you should need to be more research focused in fact your vision should be broad and how it can be done once you you can we will consult different sources right so don't rely only on the one source that you have other sources are there because if you consult more so sources so then you in fact prepare yourself for for the industry for uh, the position you want to apply for so this is the time where you can put uh, efforts this is the time where you can work hard once you would complete the degree then that would be the time to to hunt for jobs and here you can take pens here you you can uh, work really, really hard and this hard work will definitely pay you back once you will complete your your this the course fine so ready for this lecture all right swears no notebooks all right ball points fine all right so bring all these things with you once you all right sit for this lecture clear so because once you start the lecture then definitely you cannot move around you have to listen to the lecture how attentively fine and again with this spirit that this is an important lecture and this lecture will definitely add value to you clear so whenever you sit of course attend a lecture then make up your mind that this is an important lecture and you have to learn a lot from this lecture is that clear fine 
All right. So today we talk about which which topic I I told you last week. What was that? Oh yes, TPR. What TPR? Yeah, the total physical response method. Clear? So TPR, if you refer to your the textbook that we have uh, provided you, in fact, you have the soft copy, you have the hard copy if you want to. So the point is that refer to that and you will see there is the next method. That is what the total physical response method. Now even the name, if you look into the name, you will find out that there is something in this, the name also, that there is physical total physical response method so who gave this method right what are the principles of this method and what is the classroom experience fine and uh, and of course we have to see what techniques have been used in this in this method we will see uh, once we start this lecture the formally so as usual what to do start with all right review of the last lecture so dear student, this review is very important because once you review the previous lecture, then what happens? You pick up the thread. You can create a link, fine, between the present lecture and the last lecture. So let's try to uh, pick up the thread. thread. Let's try to move on. And of course, first you need to know what is the summary or review of the last lecture. So last lecture was on who, who would tell me yes community language learning CLL right so what is it community language learning okay who gave that yeah this the community language learning in fact takes a lot of principles of currents theory in fact right so that was the method the way we talked in the last lecture that is what CLL so two basic principles uh, form the basis of CLL you might have read in the uh, con conclusion of the last uh, the, the topic that we talked about that there are two basic principles they lay the foundations of which method yes the last method that is CLL community language learning and with two principles my dear students yes first of all that learning is persons so keep these two principles in mind right so first one is learning is persons now what does it mean learning is persons right you, you, you might be thinking how how of course how learning can be persons of course so when you say the learning is persons it means both the learner and the teacher must make a comment of trust right so the name itself says community right so here what happens both the teacher and the taught both the student and and what the teacher of foreign language so they try to make a comment fine comment of what trust to one another and the learning process this is what that is the learning is one learning is persons I mean persons of course both the one who teaches that foreign language and the one who learns that foreign language so if you are a TEFL instructor you and your students right so that's why learning is persons so they they in fact sign an agreement right or what they do they they make a comment of trust that both would make a community and both would would help each other and that's why we discussed that well it is neither the teacher centered nor the student centered approach whereas it is both right the CLL is both the teacher and the student centered approach clear students fine so this is the one uh, one of the two principles that underlie that makes what the foundation of the, the, the method CLL fine so that is what learning is persons mean that of course and they, they, they make a, what comment of trust between the teacher and the taught and also learning process right of course that how learning will take place and and and, and I, I'm sure you all remember 
that we discussed that the student of course when we start the lecture the teacher asks students to give their their what their uh, comments and the teacher transcribes that so what we infer from it that even initially the syllabus is designed by the student fine and of course once they part of it they once they have their voice record record and then the teacher in fact of course transcribes the, those those what expressions and then what happens students right the teacher whatever that 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 transcribed find the text is used for language activities so learning is persons right principle of which which method community language learning good students fine second principle of course that learning is dynamic and creative fine you see of course that what is dynamic by the way of course you no know, is a very dynamic person very active person of course you might have heard this law of thermodynamics in chemistry therm mean light and dynamic mean what the movement so here this learning is dynamic how it is dynamic again you can say that at times the the, the teacher right A teacher in fact helps the students and the student depend on the teacher right the role of the student remember that so initially we saw my dear students that the student depend on the teacher fine initially dependence of the student on their teacher is very high with the passage of time you see what happens that of course mean that dependence to the student move from i mean full dependence to in fact independence so once they they get to uh, uh, i mean start in fact learning the student no new new things fine they they gain confidence then what happens they move they move from that dependence to independence so that's what we have seen in the last lecture so the word is that learning is dynamic and again creative fine students create in fact so that is of course second principle of course that that what that uh, creates what foundations of cll again the learning is also see that learning is dynamic and creative learning is living and developmental process again we saw how it is developmental process it develops from from dependence to independence right initially we saw the student even they don't i mean uh, volunteer and the t teacher himself transcribes the expressions and he writes on the board and even he asks for the feedback and nobody gives the feedback remember that yeah so that was see that in initially dependence on the teacher was more so we could say well again that initially that approach is the teacher centered approach the teacher in fact translates first of all and the teacher transcribes so once the i mean this is the initial phase and once the student gain that of um, course independence then it becomes student centered approach so that's why we said that it is neither teacher centered no student center rather it is both the teacher and the student centered approach is that clear these are two principles that underlie that of course create what foundations of this cll so dear students of course the, if you see the last lecture so what happened i mean if i just want to have a look on what on the uh, techniques that, that we talked about last week so tape recording was there right and the student in fact have their voice recorded and then they of course they listen to that 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 recording in fact so again it's it's really a a, a novel experience for the students and, and and naturally when you have your voice recorded and you listen to it it gives you a sense of satisfaction it gives you a sense of achievement that your voice have been recorded and students are listening to it and again once you listen to your voice then you you i mean you you you, you learn yourself you ask yourself that well there are some problems and how can i overcome it maybe while uh, i mean for the first time when you have your voice recorded so you had some problems but once you do it again you would try to overcome your problems because all learning is self learning you see as of course a student in fact when he learns from his mistakes from learns from his experience 
so there that chances are there that he would retain that piece of knowledge is that clear students all right so that was the activity in the last week we talked about or see second one what see that students what the choice fine and student once they have their voice record they have a choice what to say and how to say in fact right so again mean is important part of the language you should know what mean what message to say and how to say fine so we learn both ways in fact that what is my message what, what is the form of my message and how would i say right mean again i mean i mean my body language my my postures my gestures my facial expression my my my, my eye contact so how would i say and definitely once the students definitely they try to have their voice recorded they learn in fact that that what to say where to take pause and how to to say that and then of course we saw that teacher in fact what uh, translates native language in chunks again small parts of course mean that when, when the teacher translates in chunks it also gives confidence to the students and it also makes learning more effective if supposing if the teacher translates the whole i mean the sentence in fact uh, uh, transcribes so that would be difficult for the learners to to understand but the teacher does he he translates or he transcribes in chunks and that really helped the students of course and even it shows that the teacher in fact can do it well so again here I mean that the teacher should be good at translating uh, of course uh, native language into the target language and then of course when the students recording right they have their conversations of course and they what happens they work best when once they, 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 they have to work on their own recordings then we see of course transcription is there right and the teachers transcribe student recorded target language and that provides what basis for the future activities again it's, it's important point that whatever voices we have recorded or in the class we record so we use it for future activities that we talked about reflection on experience for another technique that we talked about last week my dear students so what was there in fact yes people students reflect on their experience how was the learning experience how was that evening how was that lecture right so this again gives uh, a liberty to the students that they can reflect back fine they can they can of course another way is learning that they they, they learn how to give feedback right and also it it helps them how how to say something and of course how, how to say and then then mean when to say so this is what again when they reflect back their experience in language too so again right it gives them the confidence then we have of course reflective listening also when students listen so they relax and listen to their voice of course right i mean once the teacher plays back their voices so the again students it's a time for them so they, they relax and they listen to their voice again another technique was human computer so in this way like i mean the computer is a very common machine you all know it nowadays so the point is that what computer does in fact i gave you an example that when you type on a computer so what happens whenever you make a mistake so there a green line appears under that or a red line appears under that line so that is a message for you that something has gone wrong so what do you do then of course immediately in fact you you press in fact a hot key or you i mean apply the spell check so that corrects your of course that mistakes so my dear students here here is the who is the computer the human computer because the students repeat expression those sentences in control of the teacher right so once it does it that when the when 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 the the teacher in fact repeats an expression and uh, of course the, the 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 student in fact learn it because whatever sentences they repeat how do they repeat right in control of in control of the teacher and then teacher also repeat some sentences right so again it's a it's of course it's a um, i mean better source of the learning in fact and then we also saw what there are small groups uh, tasks were there students work in a group of 3 and i told you that well when you work in a group 
so it gives you what again you learn how to work in a team and it also it, it's I mean give and take situation is there right and again we discussed that the point is that we in fact I mean through this method we find more cooperation rather than competition so in a group when you work then every group member is important so once once we see that every member is important so every member tries to help his his group member so that again makes a community so in in in, in community all members of that the community they help each other and they cooperate with one 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 another so that's again you see it of course is a good technique for learning a foreign language in a community so these are in fact my dear students that we talked about in the last week is for review of the summary in fact of the last lecture before I move on again there are some important uh, questions that you need to uh, answer that again in the wake of this CLL or uh, after this CLL there are some questions that I, I, I have been asking you and again today I'll ask you at the end of this method as well that do you agree with the peace principles I mean principles of CLL or principles that we have just just talked about do you believe that a teacher should adopt the role of a counselor as Curran uses the term now, again it, it's a question again I would say that the day one I told you that whatever methods we would talk about in this course yeah they are there of course I mean to, to help you out but again you cannot replace your method altogether with the method that you, you you come to know you have to see that how how these methods can help you out in your teaching methodology right so here that the question is that do you agree with with these principles right given uh, in that we have talked about in CLL right so and then uh, then uh, again the next question is that should the development of a community be encouraged for language teaching in fact or for for language le uh, language learning so this is an, another question that you you need to think over do you think that the student should be given responsibility for creating syllabus again I, it's it's a debatable thing that well you uh, you might be thinking that how student can do do that I mean the teachers are authority they know I mean uh, the better than the students right they are the knowledge provider for example and 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 they have more experience they have more exposure they know what is right and what is wrong for the students so how come we give this responsibility to the students that they design their own syllabus right we, we saw in the method so again it, it's an open debate but then again students can say that well I mean they are the learners they are the ultimate beneficiaries they have to learn in fact and, and if they design a syllabus they could do it well right so again it, it, it's a debatable the, the question you have an arguments for it or against it so students of course which principle of CLL in fact goes well with your personal approach to teaching again you see that if you if you if you feel that yes it is one of the good methods of foreign language teaching this approach in fact gives good good instructions for for teaching a foreign language so so I mean what can you do which which principle or which technique uh, strikes you well and you you feel that, well this is a very good technique and I I can I can incorporate that technique I can use that technique in my teaching methodology and that would definitely add value to my teaching methodology so you have to think over that if you see that there are some techniques which are really really useful for example the counselor the role of a teacher is counselor and the student becomes client so again you see because it's a counselor client relationship and once you have this relationship so you try your level best to facilitate your client in the best possible way because again the client pays you in fact so client will not pay unless unless you facilitate unless you help him out and again you cannot help him out unless you know his needs what does he want in fact so that is what and the teacher role is what the, what the counselor and again the learning is non-defensive learning because like the current says because it, the principle of the CLL in fact they take from the current theory so learning should be non-defensive where security of the learner should also be considered and then of course I mean he feels what threatened frightened so we have to work with with these these experiences that how we can how we can uh, remove all these things is that clear so here are some questions that you need to answer so from this this was the, in fact the review of the last lecture and some questions that 
I wanted to ask you. Now it's a time for yes, a new method. So let's start the new method, and the method name is TPR. Oh, you know the abbreviation? Very good, right? So TPR stands for total, yes, physical response method. Very good, students. Very good. It shows that you have done this this chapter. Of course, it shows you have read this topic. Very good. I appreciate you. And that's why last week I told you that, I mean, reading before the lecture, it's really effective. Once you read, right, you give it a reading. So during the lecture, you enjoy listening to that lecture. Fine. And again, once you read after the lecture, so again, you really, really enjoy that, that, that reading. So we have done a good job. I appreciate you thumbs up for you so and again I, I, I ask you to keep on doing it fine it's the it's a prereq not only for this course but for all courses whatever you are doing this semester or you will be doing in the next semester yes so make it your habit fine fine that whatever the topic would be there whatever topic would be discussed so you need to read that topic before you listen to the lecture and then again a reading after the lecture clear you understand fine any question so far whatever we have reviewed okay counselor who is a counselor all right students well well we discussed that in the CLL the role of a teacher is counselor the point is who is a counselor in fact the counselor is the one who understands the problem of his client and and he he tries to understand which part of course where does the client suffer and then he comes forward and he takes his client out of that problem so he is a counselor in fact he he, he gives counseling in a non-defensive manner right and the learner also in fact of course learns it learns it positively he doesn't have any hesitation to ask you any, any, anything so that is what the, the teacher role of this method is the counselor and again the approach should be client centered approach approach should be student centered approach and this approach mean that of course the the taught the teacher what he does in, the, in this method in community language learning so he in fact keeps his, his students in mind, he keeps his uh, their background with students in mind and again they work in a community in fact. They trust each other, right? And only then, I mean, then uh, the foreign language learning could be, could be easy. Is that clear? No more queries? Good, good, fine. So now we are going to start the next method that is total physical response method so we might like to lecture on this method as well and we will see that that how this uh, of course uh, what, what, what is this method about what does it say and what are the principles of this the method and how and of course at the end we also see what are the techniques of this of this method and as usual I'll take you to the class as well fine students clear no more queries fine let's start now here I mean definitely whenever we start a method we need to give its introduction the name I have given given you the name is the total physical response method now if I ask you a question that what comes to your mind when and I say the total physical response method you know what physical all right I mean maybe physique right of course something that you see the physical response method in fact I mean you see or physical again means something that is that is what more visible more concrete yeah actions for example right see so physical when I say stand up sit down right so point to the door point to the window fine so sit down jump on the desk so all what is it all are what imperative commands are there well students so I was talking about this total physical response method even the name itself shows that there, there, there are some physical activities so we learn in fact what there are some instructions of foreign language teaching through what through actions 
this might you, you might go back to your to your uh, uh, in fact uh, Montessori classes where I mean you used to just learn some points learn nursery rhymes in fact and um, you remember that right what is it head and shoulder knees and toes knees and toes see head and shoulder knees and toes knees and toes and the eyes and the eyes what is it see head and shoulders and the knees and the toes what is it yes there is mean you learn again through a physical activity and still I mean whatever you have learned through those those actions you still remember so how did you learn that through actions right again one two what is that you know that okay so again these the nursery rhymes that you have learned through actions you still remember fine so that that would help you in fact like I took give example that head and shoulder knees and toes knees and toes one two buckle my shoe three four knock at the door five six pick up a stick seven eight lay them straight nine ten a big fat hand remember that so whatever we learn through these physical actions we, we, we retain fine so that these rhymes these of course examples I gave you would help you to give you an idea to give you a clue on this method that is total physical response method right so we call it the total physical response method so what is this method about by the way what does it say right so it is a, of course another approach to foreign language instruction which has been also named as the comprehension approach now the question is how it why we call it a comprehension approach so mean this method in fact try focuses and on comprehension first first you comprehend and then you speak remember that so and how would you comprehend first you have to listen it first that's why input you need first input and then you output clear so again that this this the, this is of course approach that is used for foreign language uh, teaching foreign language instruction and the name is comprehension approach why this comprehension approach because the method wants more input right initially and once you have this input and how would you have this input through listening right you listen to your instructor as we have you you have seen in the class that there is a lot of physical activities and the students don't say anything fine so they just listen they just listen and after listening fine after listening for for in, in fact 40 30 minutes then this this start what responding they start speaking so again if you go back to 1960 and 70 of course what happened that the research gave rise to the hypothesis that language learning should start first with understanding and later produce to production so this is what the research has been done in 1960 and 1970s and the research says what that understanding is very important for for production right if you want to speak well you have to listen so again what a good listener is a good speaker so for for good speaking you need to listen and that is what this, this method highlights that the method also is named as comprehension approach and which says that well for language learning you need to listen first and then you will produce so listening is important comprehension is important then you will be able to produce something well students we were talking about that this method in fact what is uh, needs more input skills and once you have input skills you listen and then you in fact give the output or you speak the point is that this method in fact uh, again also it's called natural method because natural if, if, if you see a child acquiring a language so how does a child acquire child first listens right so then he starts speaking of course and after speaking he starts reading and finally he starts writing so this is the natural way of what learning a foreign language right even learning your l1 
right so naturally when how how do we acquire l1 i mean you, you must have seen your your siblings or your nephews or your or your nieces that they listen to siblings they listen to the parents they listen to the class fellows so th first they listen and then they move on to what speaking so after speaking then they start what reading and then they also start writing so that's the natural process of learning uh, a language of course both l2 and l1 and why we call it natural process because the method this method of course it follows the same pattern that we 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 we, 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 we children adopt in learning l1 so dear students here what happens that once a learner of a language he what absorbs or he internalizes any map fine and then he sees that how target language works speaking will appear spontaneously is that clear what happens that when example when you see an action is going on fine and you see that action of course and you and you see something happening for example or you listen to it fine and you, what you do you internalize it could be any of course mean a map it could be any action right For example the batsman hits the ball right and if you see this that there's no commentary on that and you see that the batsman hits the ball and the footballer kicks the ball for example see he just sees that right a player kicks the ball and the batsman hits the ball the batsman hits the ball now there is a batsman and he hits what he hits the ball in fact so what happens first you just see you just internalize fine you just comprehend again the comprehension method so you see and you comprehend and then you try to speak spontaneously I mean so do children For example if you see that the children approach right the children follow the same approach right the children see right children listen also right and they keep on listening fine and then a time comes they they try to uh, I mean respond they, they produce so initially what happens they see their their siblings speaking and they also see their uh, siblings I mean doing performing actions so they see the actions and they also whatever expression that child use for example when you being the father you being brother you pick something right you pick a bowl for example you you pick a plate from the kitchen what happens so you pick and you say many see to tie in fact many play to tie so i mean the ch of course child around you he sees that and also when our expression you use he li listens so maybe after some time what happens that he starts saying many a play to tie i pick this plate is that clear or for example you see a, a, a batsman of course he hits the ball so the child what he does he sees that fine he sees that of course and he says example initially maybe the child says bad ball bad ball khelna hai for example you, you, you might have seen a child of five years old what he says maybe he doesn't know that term cr cricket uh, why he doesn't know maybe in that home they so, so I mean parents don't talk about the cricket but on TV he saw people playing since he cannot read that there is a cricket match going on what he does he just says that uh, there are players in the in the playground and of course they try to hit the ball so what do you say that I have bad ball khelna hai, in fact अब क्यों बैट बॉल खेलना कहता है कि उसने एक बैट देखा है उसके बाद शायद एक बैट घर में है भी है एक प्लास्टिक का बैट उसके घर है एक बॉल भी है सो ही डजेंट नो द वी कॉल दिस गेम क्रिकेट बट ही जस्ट सेज दैट मैंने बैट बॉल खेलना है क्यों कि उसने वो वट ही हैज इन फैक्ट ही हैज सीन आई मीन ही हैज वॉच प्लेयर्स प्लेइंग बट ही डजेंट नो द नेम ऑफ द गेम इन फैक्ट क्लियर और बॉल से खेलना है मैंने I hope you understand. He may not call that the football. He says just many balls are played. So this is what the point is, my dear students. That well, the learner internalize an extensive map of the target language, how the target language works, and then speaking will be spontaneously. Is that clear, students? I hope you understand. For example, the example is there. The baby spends many months listening to the people around, right? And before it. Starts before it gives, before the baby gives his first word, and everybody enjoys that. 
You see? So when a baby starts speaking and the first word of the baby, everybody in fact, uh, I mean, uh, takes it positively and people of course enjoy that word of the first word of the baby. But we don't know that, that how much work has been done before that. You see, because you, you kept on speaking, of course, and, and the, that child, I mean, ca kept on listening to people around. Fine. So, what happened? That was input. That was input. And then a time came when he, but initially when a child listens to a word, he cannot speak there and then. So is the case in this method that when we saw in, 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 in this experience that when you enter the class, yeah, teacher performs action. Stand up, sit down, move, point, this, that. So imperatives are there in fact, fine? So more focus on what? The center is what? Imperatives, again, structuralist, right? So imperative sentences are what? Focused. Is that clear, students? I hope you understand, right? So there is a lot of input and then that, that the baby chooses to speak when it is ready to do so. Is that clear? Fine? So in simple words, if I summarize it for you, that first we internalize first we absorb we need input fine we listen and then time comes where we produce where we start speaking and it's what the comprehension method comprehension approach that initially you need to have something unless you have something what would you say clear you understand so this method of course it says that well you you see you learn by seeing also you learn that foreign language by seeing, right? You see something. And again, why? what is the philosophy behind this, this children's book? You must have seen. That one, the action, of course, whatever, the, the, the verb is there in, in, in their book, in their uh, books. So there is a verb and the person, a person is performing the action, for example, right? When the, when, when the, the ver verb is play and you see a player playing, fine? When, when the, there is a verb, in fact, uh, kick, and you see the player is kicking the ball. So again, there is a picture of that. So that when the child sees that picture, so his concepts become more clear. Fine. Baat samaj ahi hai. Aarhi hai. Okay. Aani chahiye. Fine. Clear. Good. So let's move on. So there are several methods being practiced find today for foreign language instruction one of the method is this TPR of course total physical response method so one such method of course Christian again a linguist hai, but a naam hai iska. and what Terrell's natural approach aap iske bar mein padhiye ga ki ye approach hai kya hai when the name shows natural approach the natural way of learning the language ha is pe bo sara criticism ho chuka hai a lot of people have criticized on their natural approach uh, Chomsky has been criticized. Kiya hai. A lot of criticism has been done. But what the matter is that what the teacher helps her students to understand by using pictures and uh, what occasional words in the student's native language. So this is what, of course, that point is that this is the natural way, of course, the natural process is what the, the teacher do. They help the students what to understand her by using some pictures and occasional words in the student's native language. Well, students, so this is one of the, of, the, of the methods by Christian and Terrell's and this method says that what is it that what the, what the teacher do? The teacher, in fact, they, the teacher helps her students, in fact, to understand, understand her by using pictures and occasional words in the student's native language. This is the natural approach, of course, is there. So, students, fine. This is another important method of foreign language instruction. Symbol the matter in this matter what happens given by Ventus and read self-instructional program So what is it that the learners students are asked to respond in some way such as pointing each picture To show that they have understood, but they don't speak Right they just respond that example the point where I say point to the clock for example the point to the clock or to the what? mean point to the door I mean here initially in fact the teacher does it like we saw in the class point to the door point to the to the to the window fine jump on the wall for example so what is it this is what the teacher does stand up sit down turn around turn left fine turn right fine so again what is it move fine stop so what is it 
So this is what that the, the, the teacher does. So so this approach here means this uh, Venter's approach. When or what is this? The learn learnables means what is it? The teacher asks students to respond in some way, such as pointing, directing, writing. But they show that they have understood, but they don't speak. Well, students, this is another method that that, that talks about the foreign language instruction. And this method is given by the Lewis. And what does this method say? In this method, of course, we concerned with the student production, right? And of course, what we do? Less concern with the production and more concern with the student's re reception, the receptive skills that students have received enough. Clear? So, less concern with production, speaking, and more concerned with what their receptive skills again listening skills so students are given exercises and activities which raise their awareness about lexical features of the target language clear students very simple method in this method what happens we are concerned more with receptive skills more with i mean uh, listening skills and less with the production skills and how through different activities or what practices. So another method is what we are talking about. This James Escher's total physical response (TPR). One method to see how the principles of comprehension approach are put into practice. This is a method, of course, total physical response. Right. The point is this method. What does it see? That to see how the principles and comprehension approaches are put into practice. So, Asher's research, in fact, what least stressful way to achieve understanding of end target language is to follow directions uttered by the instructor. This is what the crux. Right? I, I repeat it again for you that this is less stressful for the learners to learn a foreign language if the instructor, if the instructor, yes, tells things through his what actions. Fine. So this is this is I mean what a good way of learning when the instructor he uses that the target language and fine. I mean he gives different directions in the target language and he utters those instructions and the learner listens to it. And if learners perform perf perform actions, so again it would be multiplied. Clear students? What is it? It's a less stressful way. It is, it is, of course, easy to learn, uh, to achieve understanding of any target language is to, if you have to follow directions given by the instructor. If, if the, the, the teacher of English, for example, he gives directions, so it would be easy for the learners to, to understand, right? And if the instructor perform actions, so again, it would would multiply if the instructor gives some pictures so again it would it would help the learner to internalize the real concept is that clear students fine that is of course fourth mean there are four approaches of foreign language instruction and the fourth one is total physical response now in the class what was the experience right let's move to the class so what is it the teacher calls on four students to come to the front of the room and she tells the other students to listen to watch see so other just listen see the four students come in front of the class even the teacher for example the four students are there and they what the follow the instructions right the teacher says sit down and they sit teacher says uh, teacher says stand up and they stand up and teacher says point to the door and they point so what happens in this of course experience that while well, the teacher brings four students they come in front of the class and they perform they perform activities, they, they, they follow the directions of the instructor and these four, they come from in front. And others definitely, the class, I mean, of course, students sitting there, they, they follow them. So what happens? They, of course, the teacher says, stand up, sit down. The teacher and the students stand up and sit down together several times. According to the teacher's command, the students say nothing. See, there is no listening, mind you. There is no speaking. Fine, what happens? Teachers give directions and the students follow those directions. Fine, 
teacher says sit down and oh, of course the students sit down and they say stand up and initially I mean maybe if the why did the students uh, the teacher in fact brought four students in front of the class because those four follow the directions so it becomes easy for the others who are sitting there to follow the instructions so those four come in front of the class they follow the instruction it is easy for them to follow fine and seeing those students those who are sitting in the class they can follow the instructions so this is the first experience that we have seen again what happens teacher gives the commands and the force will respond to those to her commands fine sit down right stand up and all that and they all respond perfectly what happened what happened next the teacher would like one of the students to follow her commands or one initially four follow the command then only one follows the command then what happens one student raises his hand and performs the action the other teacher commands right For example raise your hand and one teacher raises his hand fine and the teacher says right what what the teacher says she sit down and the teachers and the student sits down and the teacher says point to the to the to the light and he points to the light fine what is it so now the teacher directs to one student teacher gives orders to one student so again mind you that the were the focus is on imperative sentences so structuralist approach is there that imperatives and imperative mean why all directions are given see so that is mean that imperative sentences are highlighted or in the center so again what happens finally the teacher approaches in fact the other students stand up she says and the class responds fine even though they have not done the actions before the students are able to perform why they are able to perform because they have seen the four students and then they have also seen one student in fact so now it's become easy for them in fact because initially we, we saw that the, uh, the the four students come in front they follow the, the command of the teacher then the teacher in fact asks one student and he follows the commands so now the whole class can easily do that because an action has been done they have have got their idea they the the command is in their mind and they have seen how commands are are mean performed how and then they can easily do that in fact so now of course mean the, the teacher moves to the class and they say that and the whole class responds fine and they have not done before but they can easily do that as per the teacher commands right and then again in this way teacher also introduces new commands right once when once she feels that the student have have understood those commands and then but mind you students don't say anything in fact they remain quiet they just listen and follow the commands and the teacher changes the commands in fact at the last step of what happened lesson teacher writes the new commands on the board and each student write a command right she acts again the teacher acts it out fine and the student copy the contents from the board into the notebook simple again here we learn that the teacher of course teacher actions are also important we said teacher is an actor so here really of course he performs all those physical physical actions and those physical actions really help help the the, the learners learning a foreign language because definitely of course actions speak louder than the words so here the teacher whatever he says he performs he's i mean the teacher in fact i mean sits down right and he of course stands up then the teacher points to the wall clock and he points to the tube light or he points to the door chair so he points and then, and then the students see it and again of course teacher does not directly gives this command to the students so gra gradually he moves on first he brings four students and he gives the direction to those four students and they listen and and they and they follow and then he brings one student in front of the class um, and that student does it and again now the teacher responds to the uh, moves to the whole class and then the t teacher gives i mean commands and the students follow and during this what happens the teacher keeps on changing the commands he gives a new command in that and the students of course follow it in that rhythm so this is what goes on of course the class is over now what happens no one except the teacher has spoken a word see 
Have you seen that? Have you noticed? Yeah. There was no speaking at all. I mean, yes, only the teacher spoke some words, some commands. Nobody from the class said anything. Fine. However, a few weeks later, what happens? A fun student is speaking, in fact. We saw after that, of course, that one of the students is speaking, student is directing to other students and the teacher with these commands. They are not saying anything, they are just following the student's orders. Is that clear? So, what happens? All right. So, dear student, what happens after a week? Another student, in fact, what he does, that he gives commands to the teacher and the students and then they all follow the commands. They don't say anything, in fact. Again, it's a reinforcement, right? The more, of course, actions are there. Uh, initially, we saw the teacher does, the teacher acts, and then after a week, of course, now we see, we see that what the student gives those commands, he speaks, and others, including teacher, follow those commands. So, now moving on, that what are the observations? Fine. And what are the principles, of course, in this, in, this, in this class we have seen. Before we move on, students, I tell you that, well, this method is Usher's uh, total physical response method. And the theory behind is, of course, there is a theory. Uh, you might have heard about this, this theory, trace theory also, right? This, it's also called uh, memory trace theory, MTT. And the theory talks about that... Uh, we can, uh, re I mean, retain attributes of an object more than the object itself. Sometimes you know that you, you, you forget the name of a person, but you remember his attributes, his features, his tall body, or his, his, his long moustaches, or of course his, his, his big belly, or all that. But you forget the name of a person. Like some, and it, it happens in our life also. That sometimes you remember any any feature of a person, but you forget the name of a person, or any any object is there. That that I mean I mean the person was smart and of course tall and you know, but but you you forget the person I mean is person's name. So this really happens. This trace theory says that we can retain attributes of of, of an object more than the object itself. Clear, students? All right, and this method is course focuses on physical actions and it says that of course physical actions of, are more important uh, and actions also all, always speak louder than the words and again that well first we have to conceive things we have to uh, 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 listen and then we can we can speak well so listening is of course important once you listen you absorb things and, and you take time and again it's as a natural way because you know a baby uh, uh, listens for, for, for months, fine, uh, for years, and then, of course, uh, the, the baby reaches the stage where the baby utters the first word. So, so I mean, that, that one word, of course, we cannot say that this baby has heard that word, of course, and, you know, and he has uh, I mean, uh, spoken that word. And even, you see, the baby keeps on, I mean, of course, Im 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 improving what? The pitch, of course, of, of his voice. And you see the objects, maybe the name of the objects to baby, they, they, they change, of course. Maybe in initially, right, the, ba the, the, the baby uses a different word for his mother. And slowly and, 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 and gradually, of course, right, and the baby starts calling uh, the, the, uh, the mother to, to her, 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 of course, to mama to her mother. So this is again, this is what we, we have observed also. So, so this is what the method is to uh, talk about the total physical response that there should be some actions and again in this in this class proceeding we saw that the more of course focuses on physical actions and all that there students all right so what is it my dear students observations I mean what happens in this uh, in this class quickly we will we'll re review it we have a uh, uh, short of time so observation is simple the teacher gives command in the target language and performs it with the students. Remember that. So what is the principle behind? Meaning in the target language can often be conveyed through actions. Very simple. Right? The principle behind is that, of course, if, if you use right actions, they definitely uh, convey meaning, in fact, of course, more than the words. Right? That's why, of course, actions are important. If you perform an action, 
right? And you must have read this speech actor the theory also. Please uh, review your linguistics. So you will find out what is the speech act theory. So again, what the, the target language should be represented in chunks, not just word by word. See, stand up, sit down, point to the door. See, chunks. So teacher gives what? Commands in target language and he performs it with this action. So again, right, the point is commands and the performance. Clear? Again, the, what is the command? I mean, what is the word? and how it is performed. So actions are there, physical activities are there of course. So once you see something happening my dear students, so obviously the learning is more. And even the learning style for example, one of the learning style is learning by watching and learning by doing. So here we see that the student learn by not only by watching but also by listening. The teacher speaks and he performs and the student learn. And then of course we saw in this uh, the class that the students say nothing. Well, the students understanding of the target language should be developed before speaking. So first they need to understand. That's why we saw that they don't say anything before. They just follow the command. So they are understanding. Once they have understood that action, then they, they start producing. In fact, so production comes later on. Of course, input is important and input comes through the listening, in fact. Another thing we saw that the teacher gives commands quite commands quite quickly, see? Quick commands. So what is it? Students can initially learn one part of the language rapidly by moving their bodies. So this is what the principle behind is that what happens? Observation is that commands are given quickly. Why? Because students, yes, initially they learn one part of the language quickly, right, by moving their bodies. Stand up, see, sit down, fine. So, so what is it? This is what, what happens, of course. Right, turn your, of course, right, move your neck, right, left, fine. So, roll your neck, front, back. What is it going on? So, you roll the neck, in fact. Or, thumbs up, thumbs down. Teacher says, in fact. So, quickly mean, what? He gives commands quickly and the teacher, students learn what? Of course, mean that initially they learn part of the language quickly. So again, third thing, the next thing is of course, that we see that the teacher sits down and shows command to the volunteers. Volunteers. People then, what is it? The imperative is a powerful linguistic device through, through which the teacher can direct student behavior. This is important. That's why I said that structuralism is there uh, uh, structuralist, I mean theory is there of course that the center is on imperative commands so orders are given. So that's what of course in, see in this linguistic device these imperatives are important so the teacher feels that through these the teacher can direct student behavior because here it starts with the, you can raise a question that why it starts with with uh, Im imperatives, why not with affirmatives, why not with negatives so the point is that of course he says that once you give direction to the students so again you direct their behavior so they would be following other commands as well either they are affirmative for or negative fine well students so this was another observation we see in this this in this class proceeding that, that what the teacher does he directs students other than the volunteers in fact fine those of course who volunteer that is fine but also he directs those students, in fact, who have not volunteered. So the principle behind is that, of course, you learn. How do we learn? Through observing others and also by performing actions themselves. When others perform, of course, so, you see, you learn. And also your, your learning enhances once you perform action yourself, in fact. Another observation is we saw that, well, the teacher introduces new commands after See, she is satisfied that the first six has been mastered. So he moves on. First the teacher feels that the first commands have been done. He is satisfied with the performance of the, st the students. So then he moves on to, then he introduces a new command. It's very important that the students feel successful. If they feel that they have learned once, fine, they have learned that instruction. And then, of course, that gives them a feeling of success and then 
course they become more I mean that they remove their of course that anxiety as well I mean you know they are they become more motivated they they, they understand that they have, they have learned these these commands and now they should move on fine so definitely moving for 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 the best and of course on I mean if you win a match for example and then you become more enthusiastic for the next match so is the case here that you have learned one command and you become more enthusiastic for the next command and so is the case here that we have seen another experience of course that we saw in this class that the teacher changes the order of the command this is very important the teacher changes the alters the order of the command what students should not be made to memorize fixed routines clear this is very I mean first he says stand up sit down stand up sit down fine and then after some time point to the door point to the window right S uh, sit down stand up so again the teacher does it on purpose why if the teacher doesn't do so then what student might memorize it so the teacher in fact brings variety in the commands of course once the student not only they they, they follow the actions but also they would internalize they are listening that which command has been has been said which command has been uttered and they follow it accordingly I hope you understand it's a very important observation and the principle behind is to what to obviate in fact to discourage this memorization and to encourage this internalization to encourage what active listening that actions of course and then whatever the command the command is there the people the students should internalize they should integrate that action with the the right command that is given so if otherwise if, if the teacher I mean supposing teacher doesn't change the command then student would memorize it and that would not be of course a good practice another observation is when the students make an error the teacher repeats the commands while acting it out again in case of an error a mistake see what happens in case of an error what the teacher does he repeats the commands while acting it out so he acts it out of course again it doesn't mean that he corrects the error without acting it out no so he acts it out again correction should be carried out in an what in an unobtrusive manner fine I mean in an unobtrusive means of unclear of course maybe clear manner in fact clear so it should not be the difficult way it should not be ambiguous way again whatever error is there whatever errors he feels that students have done so what the teacher does he in fact he repeats that that error and he performs an action of course so that again students would would correct their action and again their the word that they have uttered in fact another one is students well getting bored no enjoying it yes it's a very good lecture of course and very good uh, method my dear students this which, which method total physical response where you are active your actions are very important where the learner learn by watching the actions and then obviously they, 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 they learn that foreign language the teacher gives students commands they have not heard before a new commands novel commands right they have not heard that command before so again they develop what flexibility in understanding novel combinations of target language chunks they need to understand more than the exact sentences used in training novelty is also motivating then of course if you don't give new ideas new commands then again the chances are there that students would get bored so again right to remove that boredom is one purpose and second to give them a new language item so definitely new commands are given and the teacher rightly gives the new new, new commands and the students also they they, they keep on in fact uh, uh, listening those commands and of course they keep on associating linking those commands with the action with the student the teacher is providing another experience is the teacher says jump to the desk everyone loves again fun right so language learning is more effective and it is fun again a lot of methods talk about this fun and here my dear students maybe of course uh, the point I might have skipped earlier that other methods if you see they focus on what speaking in, in, in the target language and this method initially in fact what depends on comprehension so this method what highlights listening skills right that's why of course initially students I mean 
I don't say anything, they just listen. So again, when the teacher said, jump to the desk, and everybody laughs. So again, fun, relaxed. So again, you know it very well, that, well, the learning, of course, I mean, it become, if, if the environment is, is, is conducive, so people laugh, they relax, and learning, of course, improves. Another observation is, teacher writes the new commands on the blackboard, fine. The spoken language would be emphasized over written language. The spoken expression, of, at the end, once the teacher, in fact, performs actions, and he, of course, uh, speaks different commands, and the, the students follow the teacher, and he learn, the teacher learns those commands and all that, and at the end, what the teacher does, that he writes those commands on the board so mean again priority is given to the spoken of course listening then uh, the written work again last of course a few weeks later what happened a student who hasn't spoken before gives commands of course any student definitely of course we, we didn't see any speaking right this students simply listen and follow the commands. so one of the students in fact he just hasn't spoken before gives command and the student will begin to speak when they are ready for once now one student, I mean, starts it, and of course others can do that as well, right? So, so one student, as a sample, we see that he comes and he gives commands, and the teacher and the student follow those commands. This shows that there is now it's a time for production, and now that teach, that student is capable enough to produce that. The student says, "Shake hand with your neighbor." See again, of course, there's a uh, in fact observation. What else? Students are expected to make errors when they first begin speaking, in fact. So, of course, they are expected. But teachers should be tolerant of them, work on the fine details of the language should be postponed until students have become somewhat proficient. So, so maybe it's a long slide. Simple. The point is that if the students make mistakes, it's okay, fine. They are expected to make errors, of course, when they first begin speaking because I have told you that well these failures are six step towards success so if you don't make mistakes it means you don't learn so definitely when you make mistakes it means it shows that you are the le learning in fact so mistakes definitely help you in fact in the, once you make mistakes so of course corrections are there like we see that students are expected to make errors when they first begin speaking and teachers should be tolerant of them initially and work on the fine details of the language should be postponed until students have become some proficient so initial what focus is on fluency and accuracy comes later on so this is what in fact the point is that you have to talk about today and with the, uh, before I move on to the, the principles, my dear students, what you need to know is that this method, in fact, is very important method. Well, students, so this was the, uh, this lecture on total physical response the method. So before we, in fact, uh, wind up this lecture, so there is a summary of this lecture. We should know it. I mean, I want to give you the summary of this really effective that this is what a general approach to a foreign language instruction FLI named as comprehension approach and total physical response is an example of comprehension approach we have discussed it and unlike other methods this method begins with listening skill other methods in fact focus on speaking skill and the importance is given to listening skill in fact and speaking in fact comes at the end and also writing you see the spoken is, uh, is is given priority over written skills that we see that teacher writes commands at the end and imperative forms are central in teaching right because that's what again that the teacher gives commands and he acts and the stu students follow and again the method is child acquisition the natural process of course the natural how does a child acquire a language so child acquires from this natural progression from comprehension to production, right? So child first comprehends and then he starts producing. And of course, learning is through prayerful activities that we have seen in this method that a lot of activities there, a lot of physical activities there. There are a lot of commands and of course teacher, uh, students move, jump and all that. So there is what playful activities are there. The idea of comprehension based approach come from child language. 
Acquisition, speaking is a natural product of listening. Clear? Very simple. And communication through pictures and words is fostered. But L1 is also used. Right? Here mean L1 is also used that. Maybe we have we didn't talk about this point. That of course, some initially, of course, we saw that L1 is also used. Natural approach is similar to direct method, but in former L1 is allowed. Is that clear? This is mean you can say that well, if in how this natural approach, right, and how of course mean, I mean if you find out the differences between di direct method of foreign language teaching and uh, total physical response method, you will feel that in, in, in direct method, no L1 is allowed, whereas here in this, in this uh, uh, of course, total physical response method, L1 is, of course, allowed. Fine. The teacher does not correct any mistakes, students' errors, during oral communication. The communication is going on. No, he doesn't correct. He lets people uh, speak, and then, of course, we, students make mistakes, and finally, they, they correct, of course. So, initially, focus is on fluency. Accuracy comes later on. So students, this was the today's lecture, lecture number 16, right? So we will continue this method in the next lecture on total physical response. Again, I want you to go through that chapter, read this, this, this topic again. It's a very, very important method and very useful as well and very enjoyable as well, right? Because there are activities are there. So it's also I mean exercises are there in fact. So physical, right? A lot of physical activities is there. So, thank you very much. See you in the next class. Till then, it's goodbye.